G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with another FIA Nations Cup combination. Now most of you who are kind of in tune with what goes on in Gran Turismo Sport might already know what this race is. But for those who don't, uh, Polyphony Digital were basically extremely drunk when they uh, came up with this combination because it's absolutely ridiculous and honestly I think they were just... <laughs> Oh, I, I don't know what they were doing. It's like they were just mucking around with their own settings. The track and the combination N800 specially provided cars on special stage Route X. Absolutely ridiculous. The 30.2 kilometer long fully flat out oval in N800 cars. We're going out for a qualifying session, which admittedly is completely useless as you can quite easily win from the back of the grid, but we go out anyway. Uh, the fastest car, we had quite a few to choose from actually. I think there was three, six, seven, eight different cars to choose from. The fastest of which is this car here, the Ferrari 458. Uh, we had other cars, Honda NSX, Lamborghini Aventador, uh, McLaren MP4-12C, Mercedes SLS AMG, Nissan R33 GTR, the R34 GTR, and the Pagani Huayra, but no other car can reach the top speed that this car can in Slipstream, which is why everyone is in this car here. Now the main, main, honest, honestly, the, the, the tra this is more important than the track this point here. Slipstream, you need it. You are absolutely not getting anywhere with Slipstream and we're kind of going to see how important it is in this qualifying session and in the race that precedes, or the race that proceeds rather, this qualifying session here. So you see we're going down one of the two massive straights up the slight hill here and you see uh, everyone was kind of just bumping me but then they gave up heading up the hill and I get swallowed by the pack here a little bit but that's okay I can get the slipstream now and then I can bump draft a little bit so we're gonna just uh, you know keep it under control heading through here we've just got to be tactical with where we position our car and we're going 420 kilometers an hour this car can get to about 440 or just under when you have prime slipstream I'm actually fast forwarding this twice as quickly as well so we can get down the straight in a reasonable amount of time now these banked corners this is where the race can go extremely uh, pear-shaped, extremely shaped like a pear uh, in these corners here. As you can see, they're banked corners, but the banking is staggered. So there's bumps as the banking increases all up the side of the circuit. You see the cars, they're so loaded going through here at 400 k's an hour that uh, the car just, you know, the car is so stable, but it's so twitchy. So it's so easy to lose control with everyone in one pack thanks to that slipstream there can be massive chain reactions and we do see some of that in the race but you see as we head down the second of the two main straights these straights are 12 kilometers long as well we're going to fast forward quite quickly you see we're just stuck in the train here we're just bump drafting just slipstream to try and get the best lap time possible time trial lap times are about 429 so um, in slipstream you're going to be going more than 10 seconds quicker than that. Uh, the top 10 leaderboard was so tight, it was like eight thousandths of a second separating the top 10, it was ridiculous. But we're gonna be heading through the final corner now, uh, the second of the two corners on this circuit here. And we wanna try and be on the inside here, but we just get swallowed by the pack a little bit, but we've got slipstream. And the thing here, it's so difficult to predict what your lap time is going to be because you're all in one pack, so you would expect your lap times to be quite similar. But we're going to cross the line here. You see, I was at the front of the pack for most of it, but as we come across the line, I qualify 13th with a 421.2 here. And that puts us, yeah, 13th previously mentioned. Now, interestingly, there is one different car on, in 11th position, driven by Rick Mercosi, the Aventador LP 700-4. But in the end, yes, 13th. But this is an FIA Nations Cup combination somehow, so as always, let's enjoy the beautiful theatrical introduction.
Here we go. The lid, uh, the grid lined up here. If I can speak my words correctly, will join my car in just a second here. But this race, it's this is not racing. Basically, I don't know what they were thinking, but this turned out to be one of the best, most fun combinations I reckon they've done in Nations Cup. Here, um, the Ferrari has seven gears. The reason why the Ferrari is so good, actually, is that it has seven gears, but you. On its own, you only use six of them. Seventh gear, you can't accelerate with without slipstream. Once you get into that slipstream, you go up to the seventh. You've got an entire gear of acceleration to do once you're in slipstream. This this car, yeah, like like I said previously, are the fastest of the bunch. But you see immediately the Lamborghini has lost out on the start. Acceleration not quite as good as the Ferrari here. We see we just drive straight past him. We're going to get back into that slipstream. Uh, train that is formed here. Now the start of the race is quite uneventful actually until we get to the first corner 12 kilometers down the road um, Just simply because everyone you know we have a rolling start so everyone has a gap between them And it takes a little bit of time for those gaps to close up because everyone has slipstream So you're not quite gaining on people that don't have it The only time you're gonna gain is against the leader who doesn't have slipstream. That's obviously why they're in the lead but as we head up the hill here, you see we're in 7th gear, 418, and as we head over the crest, we're about to see how quick this car can get up to accelerating quite quickly. Past 430, up ahead, there's 3 wide up ahead actually, so we're going to have to keep an eye out for that heading through the first turn. 437, 38, 39, 440, there it is, 440 kilometers an hour, an absolutely ridiculous speed in a, ro in a road car. Uh, strategy for this race is remain in slipstream. That is the only strategy. Fuel is turned off. Tire wear is turned off. Penalty system turned off. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, as you can see there, the McLaren has just lost out of the pack a bit. As these Ferraris reach their top speed, the uh, other cars begin to lose out. And this is exactly what I'm talking about here. So these two cars are losing a little bit of speed, actually. Hixie not quite taking full effects of the slipstream. Well, actually, it's probably more down to myself being closer to him, which is why I was able to pull alongside. Now, as we head through these corners here, keep an eye on the pack up ahead. As you see, everyone's just moving side to side a little bit. There's a little bit of contact just there, some sparks flying up, but everyone remains okay. Someone's up against the wall on the uh, through, through the middle of turn one here, and you see this corner just goes on forever, actually. So we're just going to have to be careful. A little bit of contact there, a little bit of Constantina effect, and the yellow, the yellow Ferrari absolutely loses it. And then it comes back across the track, smashes me into the wall. I've got front end damage, and look, I'm about to lose the slipstream range. As long as Drew Star kind of remains close enough to me, hopefully I can get back up to speed quick enough. But unfortunately, I've got this front end damage. Both front suspension and the front splitter are both damaged. And you see, I dropped out of slipstream, and by the end of the race, four and a half seconds off and then there was a gap about seven seconds behind that is the importance of slipstream you see I completely lost out there uh, at least I went up a position I guess uh, somehow a clean race even though I got smashed to the side but the yeah, air that is how quickly the race can turn on you it's only two laps as well so you know, once you fall out of that slipstream, that's the end. And if you fall out of the slipstream right at the start of the race, you are suffering for, for eight more long minutes. But we're going to go again. I've gone for yellow this time. I thought we'd go for red to start with, as, you know, what's a Ferrari if it isn't red? But let's go yellow. See if we can stand out from the pack a little bit. Hopefully, you know, we can get further up the grid this time. Uh, we're fifth highest in this split now, and we're going to begin qualifying once again. So let's head out on circuit for another completely pointless qualifying session here. Now one thing, uh, I didn't, you know, you, you don't really do any practice for this kind of race here as you're driving in a straight line and turning right slightly for about one minute worth of the lap. But let's head out. Another qualifying session here. Hopefully we can get a bit further up the grid. So we're just going to skip right. I'm going to skip that whole out lap. Uh, seven minute qualifying session here. So you've only got one flying lap uh, to do your your time in, essentially. Um, so seven minutes. An out lap is about four. Just, you know, just short of... Just short of um, five minutes. And then um, you've got two minutes left to, to get about halfway through 
the, your flying lap and then you run out of time there. You saw throughout that straight there, they were bump drafting me heading down the hill. I wanted them to overtake. I did fast forward through that quite quickly, but I had my right indicator on. I wanted someone to just go, go past me instead of bump drafting. Because um, I feel like the, doing the overtake and re-overtake is much more efficient than bump drafting as you lose speed when you run into the back of someone and then all of your you know all of the speed from the person behind you isn't transferred to the car ahead when you bump draft you've also got to be careful because there was a bit of a phenomenon occurring in this race here where if you got too many contact regardless you know i think the penalty system was definitely turned off as there's no sr flashing you know sr up or sr down flashing so don't think your sr is being impacted here and i did not see one penalty in all of the races that i watched uh, so that i think that was off but Still, it logged contact, and if you got too much contact, you would actually dis you would get disqualified from the race. The game would disconnect you. So we don't want to be doing that, but I don't think anyone fell victim to it in this race here. But as we head through the final turn, we've got quite a good run coming through this uh, qualifying lap here, and we've actually got Godo just on the inside of the turn there. I've got someone to my right, so I can't quite pull into that slipstream yet, but once I do... I'll be able to get some good speed towards the end of the lap uh, as we head around onto the main straight again. A couple of people set lap times around the 4.22 into the sit room of Brain Anchor. Go for the overtake this time. Someone stopped in the middle of the road there. And as we head across the line, I come across with a 4.21.3, puts us third on the grid. That's much better. Not that it matters really, but you see down the bottom, 11 seconds off for uh, G. Rai, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, by the end of the qualifying session, we did indeed finish third. So we're going to have one more go. Hopefully we can remain in the slipstream and not fall victim to any accidents due to that being less than ideal. So as we meet the cars on the grid here for the second time at Special Stage Route X, Ironically with this race, it had quite good points because the way the points are worked out for a lobby is the st average strength of the lobby. So if you've got more players with higher DR, there's going to be more points up for offer. And because this is just such a strange, out there, weird combination, pretty much everyone wanted to do this. So, you know, you might notice here I'm actually not in top split as I have been for the last few FIA rounds that I've done. I've been in top split most of that time. Well, my, over the last few months, every time I've done an FIA race, I've been in top split. But not this one. I was in, I think, maybe maybe even third split, just because there was that many people playing. And because of that, you've got more people with higher DR playing, meaning there's more points up for grabs. But it is really a lottery. There's no real way to just, you know, there's no real way to consolidate and make sure you're going to get a victory here. It is really just positioning your car in the right position at the right time and surviving the bank turns is all it is and anyone can do it and I by that I mean anyone best player in the game could finish last and the worst player in the game could finish first in their splits in their respective splits so it really is a lottery here but at the start of this race heading down the straight for the first time and we're going to be bump drafting these two cars up ahead to try and get some you know just try and push them along a little bit you see the people behind have caught up, giving me a nice big bump just as we head over the crest of the hill here. And I thought I was going to get past Drew Star there, but he gets a nice bump from the car behind him. And just falls, or, well no, he doesn't fall, just gets pushed to consolidate his uh, first place there. I get a nice bump as we head down the hill, puts my, myself in first position, uh, not the position to be, unless you're on the final part of the final lap. Look at the hoarder cars behind as we race down this straight at 430 k's an hour, getting bump drafted down this straight here, and the pack is just so close, absolutely ridiculously close here. As we head into the first corner, let's see who's going to survive. The two cars behind me, side by side, three abreast, essentially, as we're heading into the first turn. Someone's gone up by inside. As we head into turn one, uh, and then we've got another car heading up the inside as well, just as I get into the slipstream of Godo. There. And as we head through the bank turn, we're way, up, we're way up high. This is a dangerous place to be. You really want to be down on that inside. And I get a nice bump from behind. Go between the middle of the two cars there. I find myself in the lead again. I've got a little bit of space on my right hand side. So I'm moving down. Moving down the turn. Try and get that inside line. Because if you're up high and wide, you've got all that load on the car for the, from the banking. And it makes it so easy to lose control. 
two cars up on the banking, working together, Brain Aiken Mugungaringi, if I can pronounce his name correctly, someone completely comes across there and just makes contact with me, but I get a nice bump from behind, and that just puts me back up to speed as well, so I'm not quite sure what went on behind me. Uh, I think I might make another video analysing the replay, because uh, this is an absolutely ridiculous race. So as we head down the second straight now, uh, you see I'm six tenths off the lead and in fifth position. There was actually, you know, were, you know, there was more instances of such ridiculous gaps versus position. I think there was there was like an example of like one tenth behind the leader and you're in fourteenth position. So not quite that bad here. But you see, because I've got such a large gap to the car ahead and he's in the slipstream of the car ahead of him. We're in a bit of a stalemate at the moment, heading around the same speed, and the cars behind me have not quite got that speed. Caleb pulls out of the line there, which is interesting. Instead of going for the bump draft, you see the three beside him are bump drafting each other, and Caleb is just losing out a little. I go for the bump draft for Caleb to try and get the slipstream off him, but it's not quite working. Didn't get enough speed to get ahead of that pack. So I've got to follow the, follow the sheep here. Go behind the slipstream of the three cars up ahead and Caleb falls in behind me and he loses another further two positions uh, down on the radar there you see there's two cars coming up my right hand side that have overtaken Caleb so I think Caleb made a bit of an error there by pulling out of this slipstream to try and take it on his own not quite the correct strategy here but as we head into turn two we're going to be trying to look for the inside of the corner here to try and make sure that we can survive West Road has the same idea, he pulls to the inside before I can, that's re really where you want to be, as up high and wide you can lose control so easily and fling down across the track and then fling back up and then, well, yeah, we don't need to explain what happens there. DVL Turbo, the massive run through there, I get a nice bump draft halfway through the corner as well, Godo has lost out, not having slipstream or a bump draft, pulls in behind DVL Turbo, I pulled in the inside of the corner, hopefully someone can come down and give me slipstream shortly or I can get a bump draft. As it looks like at this point here, I've lost out. Uh, Godo coming back in ahead as well. Got to watch out for that pit wall there. Very close to, to the pit wall there. And I'll get a nice bump as we head across the line to start the second of the two laps. So this is where we have to start thinking about where we can position our car. And essentially it comes down to, are you going to get a bump draft before the finish line? Or are you going to slingshot pass absolutely perfectly before the finish line as well? Try to go up the centre of the two cars there, Deadly Dan and Godo, but not quite on. I just run into the back of Godo as well. So we've got a bit of a similar situation to what happened with Caleb on the previous straight. Godo is out of the line and not quite able to get the speed to try and overtake. So what I do here is go to the outside of Godo. He falls way back as I have that extra overspeed. And I've got to try and pull into this queue on the left-hand side. There seems to be a bit of a gap after this green car here. I try to pull in. A little bit of contact to my left-hand side, but it, it was kind of okay. I've kind of fallen in here. I've got a little bit of the edge of the slipstream from the four cars, or the five cars that make up the top five, obviously. You're not going to have six cars making up the top five. <laughs> Anyways, we head down the straight. Look at that radar. Four, four abreast, and it's got two abreast behind me. Another car bump drafting the red car, and you see I've been absolutely swallowed here. Found myself down in 12th position on the final lap. Not where you want to be. We do want to be close to the front, but not so close that we're losing out. So as we head up towards turn one, is there going to be a little bit of drama coming up? See, there's a couple of cars on the edge of the track here. Is there going to be any issues? I think we're going to be okay. A little bit of a little bit of contact there. Someone's out on the edge and just grazes, comes across and slams the silver car towards the inside of the circuit. But not to worry. See, Deadly Dad up ahead of me. I get a little bit of contact from behind then. I'm not sure if you saw the radar, but there was an absolute skew of cars heading across the circuit, so I think there was a massive incident at that point there. And as we head through turn one, I'm up behind Johnny Speed here. I got a nice bump draft from behind as well. Close to the front and on the inside of this on the inside of the track, on the inside of the corner, I think we're gonna be able to survive this one. You see we've got actually the Nissan GTR, I'm not sure whether that's the R33 or R34 GTR uh, on the on the screen there is up in third position or in second position actually but you see unfortunately we just get nudged into the wall again on the exit of turn one and we've just lost out ninth position at this point here up behind west road hopefully we can just grab that slipstream off st nickel and hopefully we can get brought back towards the front of the pack so we're four tenths off the lead in eighth position at this point up behind st nickel we're going to go for the overtake of the bump draft it looks like the overtake to me hopefully we can get that done 
around the outside of ST Nickel, pull in, Johnny Speed has just stepped out of the slipstream to give me a little bit and has just pulled back in, has just allowed me to get the slipstream of Wagongaringi here and the car on my left was losing out but got a nice bump draft there, is he going to be able to get back in, I grab the slipstream off Shifty, a couple of the cars ahead pull out of that slipstream train, gives the cars behind an opportunity to catch up and we're working our way up towards the front on the final part of the lap here. So you see we've actually got that Nissan up in first position, not a Ferrari, which is interesting because that was the uh, the Ferrari is or the obvious meta car here. And then what, see, uh, Epic Joker spec is just out of position a little bit in that dirty air or, or um, full non-slipstream, that air resistance rather. And as we try to pull in here, a little bit of side-to-side -side contact with West Road there as we try to pull into the slipstream. That was a little bit awkward and maybe not 100% up to scratch on my part but I think it was just about okay, we ended up losing out anyway. One corner to go, down in ninth. This is actually not looking that good, remember we started third, so hopefully we can get at least back up into third. On the inside of the final corner, hopefully, well you know, you never hope that your opponents crash, but it certainly would be unfortunate if they did, and that is exactly what's happened behind. I just missed the back of Epic Jokers, but get a nice nudge from behind there and almost lose control. But thankfully, the downforce on this Ferrari just allows me to keep that under control. A little bit of contact. West Road up in the lead at this point. Nick Mannequin in second. Shifty in third. Looking up the inside of Shifty at this point here. I get the bump of an absolute century. Rocketing towards the line. I've got about 100 metres to go as we race up towards the finish line. Someone coming up on me inside. I just crossed the line in the lead by about half a tenth of a second how about it absolute victory there how how good oh my goodness <laughs> I can say when I when I won that race when I was doing that I absolutely yelped out in joy as that race my goodness that was a good one to win a victory in Nations Cup and you're gonna see the points I win in a second this is probably about third you know probably second but it could be third split 195 points this was also the final slot which has the least amount of points uh, but we ended up getting through there with the victory how good what a what an absolute race well actually it's not really a race is it i won the lottery and that's about the only lottery i'm ever going to win but wow i do hope you enjoyed that one do hit the like button if you did do leave a comment as well any questions comments constructive criticism is all much appreciated i do read them all and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this but that's going to be the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.